Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture 27 of Mathematical Modeling and Simulation. So in this lecture, we are going to focus on analysis of stock market. So there are three types of analysis as I will explain in the lecture. And in this lecture, we are going to focus on the technical analysis and the various market indicators of technical analysis. So without a delay, let's start. So what are the three types of analysis of stock market? One of them is technical analysis. Then we have the fundamental analysis and the sentimental analysis. So this lecture is going to purely focus on the technical analysis. So rest of the lecture, the next subsequent lectures will be focusing on fundamental and sentimental analysis. So let's first understand what exactly is this technical analysis. So here is a definition. Technical analysis is the study of market action primarily through the use of charts for the purpose of forecasting future trends. So in just this one definition, you can see many things have been answered because as I usually tell that the way to understand anything is to ask three questions, what it is, why we do it and how we do it. So first question we are focusing on what is technical analysis. So it is telling you that this is a study of market action. So this is a kind of analysis in which we study the market action. So firstly, we should be clear with the meaning of the word. What is this market action? So I'm coming to that. So let's just un uh, understand the rest of the things. Primarily through the use of charts. So this line is actually explaining how we are actually going to do it for the purpose of forecasting future trends. So this is telling why we are doing so. So one single definition is including the three answers, what, why, and how. So now let's first understand the meaning of market action. So market action means it has the three principal sources of information available to the analyst or the trader. So these are price, volume, open interest. So this open interest is not much used in uh, while dealing with stocks. Uh, this is most of the times used while investing or trading in futures and options. So we are not going to talk about that uh, now. Right now we are just going to focus on this price and volume. So in our previous lecture, we already talked about what is the meaning of this price. So there are various kinds of prices which are, uh, you know, attached with the stock. So we have an opening price, we have a closing price depending upon a day. We have the average price, we have the, a 52 week high price, 52 week low price. So there are so many kind of prices involved. So that information is going to decide about our market action, that how the market is going to perform, whether it is going to rise upwards, whether there is going to be a bullish trend or they are going to be a bearish trend. So that's the essential meaning of the market action, which is decided by the price and the volume. And volume, you, uh, we, we already discussed the meaning of the volume in previous lecture. By volume, we mean the amount. It's basically the amount of the uh, stocks being traded, bought and sold in a particular day or over a particular period of time. So that's what the meaning of market action is. So this technical analysis is a study of this market action. Like you want to invest money, so you'll make a study. You will do some analysis so that you can make money and predict the future trend. So by this, we are clear with what is the meaning of technical analysis. So then the question is there, why do we do this? So although our previous definition was self-explanatory to give you the answer of the why part, so this is again explained here. The goal behind technical analysis is usually to identify trading opportunities and capitalize on them using a disciplined rules-based approach that maximizes long-term risk-adjusted returns. So the goal so that's our aim why we want to do it 
right so we want to identify the opportunities okay where is the opportunity okay the market is currently going all time low so this is a good opportunity maybe to invest in the market maybe to buy some stock because if you will be uh, if you will be buying at a low price then it is uh, expected or anticipated that in future when the prices will rise then you can sell it so there are certain opportunities market gives us and capitalize on them capitalize means to make money from those opportunities and how do we do it we just don't do it randomly right nobody is going to do it randomly because the people who do it randomly or just try their luck so that does not work always that is rarely a poor approach to do so it has to be done systematically through technical analysis so this technical analysis is giving us a disciplined rules based approach rules based approach means there are some rules there are some algorithms you can say there are some uh, guidelines which needs to be followed uh, that and the, who defines those rules actually those rules have been defined by the researchers or the traders or the analysts who are into this uh, uh, business of making money from stock market since many years so they have observed the things and they have come up with some algorithms or some formulas so whatever type of uh, calculative mechanism there can be but it has to be some rules based approach it cannot be any random guess or anything like that and that maximizes the long term risk adjusted return so risk adjusted uh, should also be clear that uh, the way it is uh, done in detail is also aim to cover your risk factor risk is always there we cannot completely avoid the risk but some approaches are there which are there to help us even to adjust the risk to a certain extent right so that's the purpose of performing technical analysis basically we want to identify the opportunities and we want to capitalize on them using some mathematical or rules based approach and most of these are mathematical is developed by the mathematicians and the statisticians so now let's go towards how to do it so if you want to know how to do the technical analysis so this is a huge area this needs to be studied uh, for you can say uh, over a period of months in order to understand it completely and then practiced regularly uh, you cannot learn this within a one lecture or some few lectures so in this lecture i'm just going to give you a brief overview of the things Uh, because it is really insufficient uh, time to grab the total the whole idea the completeness of technical analysis just to uh, make it understand in one lecture or few lectures so i'll be explaining it in very uh, brief sense so there are three premises of technical analysis and they are based on dow theory so all of you might have heard about this american uh dow jones industrial average so that's an index and this dow along with his uh, uh you can say partner who was charles so charles jones uh, sorry sorry this person was charles dow and his partner was jones so they developed this dow jones theory it's also famously known as dow theory so the whole concept of technical analysis is based upon dow theory he published it in journals in wall street he did not write a book over there so that information the theory is not available in a book form but it it was published in the form of a journal and people are working on this theory and has been transforming this to or modifying this to newer and updated uh, you can say rules and regulations but the fundamentals of technical analysis are always derived from do theory so there are three premises of it the first is market action discounts everything this is very important to understand it means see you have just understood the meaning of the word market action market action means we have the information about the price we have the information about the volume we have the open interest in case of futures and options okay let's talk about this price and volume so this discounts everything means that these things contain 
all the relevant information over the real time like suppose uh, something happens some big company announces a new contract with another big firm or there is a merger going on between two big companies so investor is going to expect that the individual share prices or the share price after the merger of these two companies is going to rise because if it is a positive thing then the price the market is supposed to go up the market is anticipated to go up so this information the information which is coming in this form that the companies are going to be merged so the the effect of them on the price is already adjusted in the price right so if after this announcement the prices goes up so that was what anticipated right so the prices have already gone up so that's for the meaning of this that whatever is being happening to the price the price is reacting according to all the relevant information so the stock price contains all the information within itself so that's the meaning of this but this forms this is closely related to the efficient market hypothesis which we discussed last time but this is an important point on which the do theory is based we are not going to discuss the do theory in detail so that's it about the first premise the next is price moves in trends so that's obviously a very important point which needs to be uh, highlighted here because if this is not assumed right if this is not believed then obviously you can't uh, incorporate the technical analysis the whole technical analysis is based upon this we assume that there is always a trend going on right so there can be three kind of trends there can be a down trend we discussed this in the last lecture there is an up trend the stock is the price of the stock is expected to rise or it is rising down trend it is decreasing and or you the third trend is the stock is behaving sideways like it's consistently moving between high and low but maintaining a constant trend there are no fluctuations there is a very low volatility associated with it the prices are not going very much high or down so there are three kind of trends possible so whatever be the trend but there is a trend that's the assumption of this uh, you can say technical analysis because without this belief you can't work on because if you will believe that there exists a trend only then you will be identifying the trend as i told you the goal of technical analysis is to identify the trend okay what is supposed to be the trend tomorrow when the market opens is it going to be upwards it is going to be downwards so you want to predict the trend only after looking at the existing trends of the previous day or the historical data but that's all about it that the price moves in trends third point is history repeats itself so this is also an important point history repeats itself means as i discussed in the beginning that uh, grabbing opportunities we want to grab the opportunities when the market is going to be at quite low so we want to buy some stock at that point so we are getting an opportunity over there so you know in history there have been several instances where the market had touched a quite low point due to certain incidency right now this technical analysis or any kind of analysis we are not interested in why the price is going up or why the price is going down right so we are not interested in analyzing the reasons why they are going up or down we are interested in knowing when they are going up and will they continue to go up or go down right so that's the aim so history repeats itself means there had been certain instances in history when the market was quite low and then it went high from that point onwards so that means uh, every time uh, in a decade it is believed uh, in in the market that within a decade or a longer period of time there always comes a point when the market touches its lowest point and the market touches its highest point so that's the meaning of this so if you believe this premise then there is a good way uh, so based upon this you can do the long term analysis and then you can predict the uh, downtrend up 
trend of the market but the most important of all these is this one price moves in trends because people mostly who are using technical analysis are the traders they are the short term investors uh it's it's not like the long term investors do not believe in this technical analysis but this is most of the times used by the people who are doing the intraday trading so within one day they want to gain profits so they will be highly all the time looking at the charts how the market is behaving and based upon that they are going to decide they want to buy or they want to sell so their trend identification become very very important so here we are going to talk about few indicators so now i was just telling you that there exist a trend so there are some indicators indicators means okay we are just constantly looking at the graphs or the charts you might be already familiar with these kind of charts when you are looking at the markets when it is open it's working in real time right so you can see the market prices are going up and down of a particular stock you are focusing on so it's behaving something like that right so what do you do by looking at this price okay you cannot simply say because the moment it is here nobody knows what is going to happen the next moment right suppose you take a decision okay i need to sell it because it has already gone to low i have already made a loss i don't want to be a, a more loss so i'll sell it because it is very low for me so say i sell it at this point immediately after a few minutes or you can say after a few moments it the market goes up again or it's it's not about few moments it can be the next day also so the point is in future if the market goes up from this point onwards so that means this was your wrong decision you should not have sold at this point you should have waited so that's the point the decision which we are going to take should not be random it should not be like any based upon any intuition or something like that it has to be a calculated decision so there are algorithms there are some well defined indicators uh, given by the researcher there are quite a lot of indicators existing in the market these days uh, which help you to decide whether you need to buy or you need to sell so that's the ultimate aim you want to know when to buy and when to sell so for that we are going to discuss these three important indicators i'm telling you the list is not exhaustive there's a whole lot of complete uh, uh, list of market indicators and it will take quite a lot of time to understand the mathematics behind them so that can become a full fledged course in itself but here i'm just going to give you idea how these are going to work because these are the most commonly used ones so let's first talk about moving average so moving average is a technical analysis tool that smooths out the price data by creating a constantly updated average price on a price chart a moving average creates a single flat line that effectively eliminates any variations due to random price fluctuations so uh, let me explain you over here for example you have say as i just shown you this this is the stock prices it's going up and sorry it should not behave this way anyways let's just consider it up to here so the average has to be computed like what is the average you want to you want to see an average of 10 days like you note the you notice the 10 day data you take the 10 day data okay over the past 10 days what was the price of the stock right so 10th day like the previous day suppose you are <coughs> working today so today is say the 11th day and you will take the data of past 10 days 10th 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 so you go back in time to the last 10 days and you note the price of the stock so which price you are going to note it can be the opening price of each day it can be the closing price it can be the maximum price which the stock touched on a particular day it can be the minimum price so there are various kind of prices but most of the times it is the closing price so just to give a uniformity 
uh, to the formula or so that everybody is just looking at the closing prices all the time it's not like one day you are looking at the opening prices and the other day you are comparing with closing prices that's not how it's going to work you have to be consistent in choosing your uh, the observation indicator so most of the times most of the people or investor look at the closing prices so you notice the closing prices for the past 10 days and take an average of that so that is called average right so this average can be 10 day this average can be 20 days so the people who are interested in looking at the short term behaviors so they look at the 10 day 20 day or 50 day average but if you want to invest for a long time so obviously the trend also has to be seen in a long time back in future so 200 days average or 300 days average is also common right so that's the meaning of average that you select some duration and note the closing prices for that and then you compute the average now the point is we are not going to do that the computer software is already going to do that so you go to the investing websites because everything is done online so you perform the technical analysis there or you want to see that whether there is an option of looking at the average so you just click on that option and you will look at the average i'll show you a snapshot of that and the question now arises why it is called a moving average so this is called a moving average because it is constantly moving like if you are looking at the 10 day average today it will have some value but if you look at the 10 day average tomorrow it will have a different value because the next day the observation day is actually say your 12th day like tomorrow so in that case you will be taking the average of the previous 10 days right so the one day gets reduced from the history and one day another day gets added up so day by day the new data is being added into this formula so therefore it's a moving average it's not going to be a static line it's constantly changing so therefore it's called a moving average so that's the meaning of moving average so here there are examples we have simple moving average so simple moving average is the one which i have just explained to you there's a linearly weighted moving average so in linearly weighted moving average what do people do so suppose you collect data you have the data for the last 10 days of the closing price of a particular stock then in this case the 10th day will be given more weightage because whatever has happened recently is going to affect the stock uh, maximum right because suppose the first six days the stock was behaving good like it was rising but for the past four days it has been say continuously dropping its value then obviously it is expected that on the 11th day the similar trend might continue so the effect of the first day trend on the 11th day that means today is going to be obviously less as compared to the effect of the 10th day so that's why researchers suggested that instead of computing the simple average you compute a weighted average and assign more weights to this 10th day and then relatively lesser weight to 9th day relatively lesser day weight to 8th day and so on so they take the linear weighted average like uh, if the weightage is 100% so the 90% weightage is given to the 10th day 80% and so on so the total becomes 55 so whatever we know all how to compute weighted average and in fact we don't need to compute that the computer is going to do that for us so people believe this is a better way of looking at the averages and since there are further generalizations also there are exponentially weighted moving averages so in that case that is also a weighted moving average but the weights are not distributed linearly they are simply not like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 9 10 they are not distributed that way they are distributed exponentially right so there are generalizations i'm not going into detail of that and then this point i have explained the average is taken over a specific period of time 10 days 20 minutes or whatever time you want to choose you can choose from there or any time period the trader chooses for investors and long term traders so we have the 200 day average 100 day average and the 50 day simple moving average these are the popular choices so now the point is the question is okay what to do when we compute these moving averages what to do with that so here is an indicator if the moving average line is angled up 
an uptrend is underway so obviously the average is going high angled up means it's it's like this so the averages are going up from the fast past 50 day average is continuously going up so obviously it indicates an uptrend however uh, it's it's not a very good indicator as i'll tell you moving averages don't make predictions about the future value they just simply reveal what the price was doing in the past and then there is another way that instead of looking at one moving average so uh, it is usually believed okay let me just come back here it is usually believed that say this is your uh, uh, the line of say moving average uh, you, you are looking at the graph and you computed the line of moving average say your stock is behaving like this right so if it is remaining above the line of moving average so that means uh, it's it's already running high and if it goes below the moving average so that means it indicates a downtrend so it indicates uptrend when it is above the line of moving average if it is below the line of moving average it indicates a downtrend right so that way you can predict and decide your buying and selling so this is when you just look at one line one moving average people also look at two moving averages or more than two moving averages to decide about this buying and selling so this is called crossovers so i'll explain you this with the next slide what is the meaning of this cross crossover so by plotting a 200 day and 50 day moving average on your chart a buy signal occurs when the 50 day crosses above the 200 day so this is an example of 250 day. it can be any number so say if this is m day this is n day say n is less than m so if the number of days less say this is n day crosses above the line of m day average so it's a buy signal you should be buying that but if it is the above uh, opposite so it's a selling signal right so the less number of days average is crossing the line of the average with more number of days so you should buy otherwise you sell so this is called double crossover where you compare more than one moving average so let's see all this graphically here so this is a graph i have taken from this uh, image i have taken from charting.com this is a famous website which provides all the sort of technical tools for technical analysis you just go to this website and whatever indicator you want to select just type in and select from the option it will show you everything so like you can see i have selected the closing price for the observations this is a volume it's automatically showing this the moving average i have selected two moving averages the 50 day and the 200 day so this is a stock uh, i did not mention which particular stock it is okay but whatever it is so this is the 50 day the purple line this is the line of 50 day moving average and this green line is the 200 day moving average for this particular stock so you can see at this point the 50 day moving average go beyond below the 200 day moving average so this is a selling signal because it indicates a bearish trend the stock price will go down so it indicates a selling signal but here when the 50 day stock price go uh, 50 day average goes above it crosses the 200 day average line so it's a buy signal so that's these are the signals these are the indicators that's the meaning of the indicators okay that what we are gaining by looking at the graphs by looking at the graphs we are actually trying to identify these sort of points so it's not just observing the averages going up and down we have to have certain well defined rules with that okay when this is going to happen then this means i should buy or i should sell so these are well defined techniques given by the researchers who have developed these uh, you know indicators and so i hope it's clear so that's the crossover i shown you so here is another example so this chart you can see the moving average of 100 day has been computed so you can see this is the line of 100 day moving average and look at the stock price so you, the stock price is always remaining above this line so that means whenever the stock price comes down to this one it goes up again 
it shows some trend it goes the moment it touches this it goes up so that means in this case this is acting as a support so this is another technical term used in the technical analysis so there is a support and there is a resistance so support is provided from below the resistance is provided from above so that means when the prices are falling down but they have a lower bound from there they get the support from the average so the average the 100 day average here is supposed to expect it to provide a support that means okay the moment it touches it 100 day average it's acting it's after that it's going to rise so in some stocks in some cases if this is the scene if this is the scenario you see uh, so you can predict accordingly that here the average is acting as a support right so this is another example of moving average so if you talk about whether it's a good indicator or not so this is the very commonly used most com most commonly used indicator so the advantages they are very popular and they embody some of the oldest maxims of the successful trading so they have been very old in practice and uh, continuously used for many years so that's why they are very popular and they trade in the direction of trend as i just explained to you that if the line of moving average is going above so it up shows it shows a uptrend if it's going down so it shows a downtrend so they let profits run and cut losses short so these are the benefits the it forces the users to obey those rules by providing specific buy and sell signals based on those principles so this is something i just told you the crossover is one example which is telling you the buy and sell signal according to a rule that if the 50 day crosses above the 200 day so there is a rule which say you buy it and similarly there is a selling signal so because they are trend following however they work best when the markets are in a trending mood so this you can say is a uh, i'm explaining cone so here it was the pros of it here it is the cons of it so it works best when the market is in a trending period trending period it is either up uptrend it is either down or downtrend if it is behaving like uh, sideways or it is not showing much volatility in that case that this is not a good indicator to use right because most of the times the markets behave sideways it's it's not very frequent that the prices are going up and fluctuating very frequently so most of the times market behave sideways so in that case this becomes really not a good indicator so that's a limitation next we are going to talk about next indicator which is oscillator so this oscillator is a general term but here only we'll be talking about one particular type of oscillator which is momentum so this type of indicators work well even in the non trending market so you see i picked up the limitation of the moving average and just got a solution to that okay so when the market is sideways when the market is not much trending or a particular stock is not much trending then what should be the indicator which i should be looking at so there are the oscillators which you should be looking at and one of the most commonly looked oscillator is the momentum so what is this momentum momentum is calculated using this formula the difference between two values so v is the latest closing price so say if you are looking the momentum today uh, obviously so it will be uh, taking the closing price of yesterday so that would be the latest closing price and v dash is the closing price say x days ago so that number of days how much days you are looking at like you are looking at a 10 day momentum you are looking at a 20 day momentum so this is also like average you have to select the duration for how much duration you are looking at it so uh, that way it will compute so it will be the difference of the latest closing price and the closing price 10 days ago or 20 days ago whatever you select so that is in that sense it is said to be a x day momentum so clearly it measures the rate of extent or descent so it's a difference between the prices so it's not giving you the price it is giving you the difference between the price so suppose you come to know that within the last 10 days the price has gone much higher so obviously v minus v dash is going to be positive and it's going to be a big number because if the difference is high so it's a big number so in that case we say the momentum is high the stock suddenly 
uh, took a momentum and it suddenly rose to a value momentum basically you know as the, according to the physics signifies the velocity it has a direction because it has a sign because if v is greater than v dash we say the momentum is positive if v is less than v dash we say it's negative so i'll explain you the meaning of this positive and negative also but i'm explaining you here that what actually momentum is measuring the momentum is measuring how fast or how slow the stock is going up or the stock is going down so that's why it works like that it works on the difference between the prices okay so here's an example of the graph uh, which is showing you the momentum so if you look at the momentum graph always consider uh, you know comprise of a zero line so this is a zero line this is the above line uh, obviously this is a zero line so this is the 500 and minus 500 is the range in which it is plotted uh, right now just don't look at this value so this is something else so this is from 28th feb to 17th of august so it's a quite a big number but from within this range you are looking at a 10 day momentum so each day each day the value of momentum you are looking at which is indicated is a 10 day it's a difference between the values of the 10 days i just gave you the formula so uh, so that's a zero line is always present there sorry so you see this is the indicator if the prices are rising and the momentum is above the zero line it shows the uptrend so this is another indicator i'm talking about okay you computed the 10 day momentum you look at the 20 day momentum then what to look at what will be that which will help you to decide whether to buy or whether to sell so this is what which is going to help you that if the prices are rising prices mean the stock price is rising that means it's already uptrending and the momentum is above the zero line so be very careful uh, just like uh, sorry unlike the moving averages it's not only looking at the average it has to be looked at combination uh, between the stock price and the momentum so the momentum should be above the zero line and the price is also uptrending then it shows that uptrend is there okay but it is accelerating the momentum is there the momentum is positive but it is gaining more momentum so the market is uptrending so the rate see something is rising but it is rising the rate of increase is also rising so that means the momentum is also increasing the uptrend is accelerating like this situation you are above the zero line and it is rising so here this graph is incomplete i have not shown you the stock prices don't look at this some uh, right now so the market price is rising and the momentum is also gaining so that indicates uptrend so the second point is exact opposite of the first point if the momentum crosses the zero line and prices fall and it means downtrend is accelerating so the buy signal is above the zero line and the price rising and selling signal is below the zero line and price is falling like if you look at this case so it's below the zero line this point so it's below the zero line so you just sell it because the price is also falling i'm not showing you the graph so you may not be looking at price so you sell it over here but if you sell here the other way here so that is going to be wrong decision because okay it's below the zero line but it is uptrending so below the zero line and falling is the right combination to sell and above the zero line and rising is the right combination so again i would say this is all indicators but there's no guarantee to anything right market can behave crazy at all the points you are not expected to okay that okay if i'm using this indicator then definitely i'm going to gain profit this is never going to happen these are all just the uh, guides or indicators to help you take your decision but there is never a guarantee okay so that's the momentum indicator and the third indicator which we are going to talk about is rsi so the relative strength index this stands for rsi it's also momentum oscillator but this measures something else so this was developed in 1978 this is also a very famous indicator used 
uh, here I have not given you the formula because we won't be able to discuss the formula in detail but it has something to do with the gains and losses so this indicator works on based upon how much gain the uh, price the stock has the stock price has gained and how much loss uh, it was into so based upon that there is an indicator coming so the RSI provides technical traders signals about bullish and bearish price momentum and it is often plotted beneath the graph of an asset's price an asset is usually considered overbought when the RSI is above 70 percent so if the ratio of gain to loss so basically it's the ratio of the gain to loss if the ratio of gain to loss is quite high the company has already gained so much profit so many people have already invested into it because they believe the company is going to make profit but obviously there comes a saturation already so many investors have bought it or invested into the company so the stock becomes overbought so at that point there is a chance the market the price of that stock will decline from that point onwards because it's already reached at a saturation so that's the indicator mathematically that how we are going to look at okay now this is already overbought or oversold so it's decided according to this mathematical value so the graph will show you the rsi so if it is above 70 so it's uh, you can see here it's a bearish trend it like if it's near to 70 you can say if it slides just below the horizontal 70 reference level it is bearish trend and it's just above the 30 reference level it's a bullish trend that's bullish means okay it's already oversold many people have sold the shares of this company so now it will be open for other people to invest the, the people will invest because it's already touched its low price so it may signify a bullish uptrend sign so you can see it graphically here it's the same graph which i showed you earlier so rsi is given here so this is uh, the red line is the 70 this is the index 70 line and this is 30 so it's always plotted between 70 to 30 and in between there is a middle line right whatever it is signifying so you can see this rsi plotting this is how the rsi is going the moment it goes below the line 30 below the 30 line so that means it is over sold at this point so it predicts at this point the indicator is the stock price should go up after this point so you look at the price after this point so obviously it started going up after a certain time right it's not like immediately it will happen but after a certain time it's going to happen and then it keep on rising keep on rising so the rsi you can say keeps on fluctuating it remains nearly at 60 to 55 56 and then the moment it crosses above 70 and then just when it came below 70 so nearly at this point it goes down but again after a certain point it rises so these are the indicators so of the overbought and oversold and you can take decision accordingly according to this rsi indicator so that's all about the three indicators and i just told you there are many more indicators which you can read and learn about them but uh, the lesser number of indicators you, you rely on and you practice them so that's a better way instead of incorporating many indicators at the same time so this all has been very much well explained in this book by john j murphy technical analysis of the financial markets it's explained in so much detail that you will be uh, absolutely stunned with the detail the level of detail in this book of the technical analysis so this is one of the best book if you want to learn technical analysis fundamentally very clearly in the next lecture we are going to focus on the fundamental and the sentimental analysis